national flower of Honduras. Aren't they blessed? Welcome, very warm welcome to this care collab of the Rincolalia digbiana. Not just digbiana, but you could call it Platilla digbiana. I bought it as Brassavola digbiana. You can also get it as a Caplia digbiana or a Lelia digbiana. You can also get all these varieties if you have it with the variety Fimbripetala. And that is pretty much self-explanatory considering how these blooms are frilly and lacy, heavily fimbriated. So all these names would apply. It's not just Rincolalia digbiana. My care collab today for this gorgeous, gorgeous pot grower <laughs> is with Orchidea, with Nicole Diana and Todd's Tropicals. And as per usual, the links will be in the description below. As soon as I see their links, I will update their channel links in the description to the corresponding links of their videos regarding this gorgeous, gorgeous Digbiana. So I am in southern Spain and I grow mine in Leca and self-watering. And my temperatures for about seven months of the year are adequate for its blooming. It likes it hot. So I can do hot here in southern Spain, but my winters are a little bit on the dodgy side, let's say, where she grows indoors and my temperatures can drop down to 14 degrees, as was the case this past winter of 20 and 21. That is a bit too cold for it. Plus my setup, yeah, with the evaporative cooling and all that around the roots, it's not ideal. But we do tide her over in such a way that if people talk about a wet, dry cycle, with the self-watering setup that I have, that is not a possibility. But I do manage to get around that somehow by keeping the reservoir a little bit drier as opposed to what's going on now. Quite full, and you can see that nasty rim there. That is how I keep her in the summer all the time. And now the reservoir is half full because she needs to have all that water while she's blooming to sustain herself. In the winter, the reservoir is a little bit more on the drier side, but I make sure to keep the microfiber damp at all times. This orchid has been with me since August of 18. So we're just about coming up to three years. I got it from Großrechner Orchideen and I was very, very happy to get such a sizable plant. She was not blooming size when I bought her and they said one to two years blooming, depending on the conditions, of course, of where she's going to live. And sure enough, it took only one year and I got her to bloom, despite the fact that my growths at the time were not anywhere near to what they are now. So she is a vigorous and happy bloomer if you can give her enough light. And when I say that, no direct sun. In my climate, I cannot give her any direct sun. That would burn the leaves. Even though she has this glaucous effect on all her structures, because that is the protection against the sun. That's her natural defense mechanism against too much light protecting the leaves. That should not be wiped off if it can at all be helped. Early in the winter, I had to do some intervention because I saw signs of scale on my other cattleyas that are living where she lives. So I did have to go and wipe down the leaves, which I absolutely hate doing because I really, really like this gray glaucus effect. I enjoy that a lot. It's part and charm of this orchid. But when it comes to pests, I was not going to take any risks. She had no signs at all, but she was taken care of as a preventative measure so that nothing would happen if I missed the mark on the other ones. But this one has bloomed regularly for me since I got her after the first year and only one bloom on each growth. But for the first time, I have my two leads blooming. So this is my first time to get two blooms and what a treat it is. And it is now almost the end of February, which is actually a, a month and a half too late for it, because normally I get her to bloom before my golf green hair pig does. And they kind of bloom in succession, so I get this beautiful frilly look. 
for about two months on the trot. This time it was the other way around and she took quite a long time to get into bloom mode. That is probably because my temperatures dropped so drastically. A couple of weeks in January, they were horrendously cold, which slowed her growth down and the blooming subsequently is a little bit late. But better late than never is all I can say. This one was declared the national flower of Honduras and aren't they the lucky ones? It was discovered by Jose Antonio Molina Rosito, who is a retired professor of the Zamorano Pan American School of Agriculture. And the only thing I can say is that this professor, I am very grateful that he found this orchid. It is one of my top five favorite orchids. I just love the compact growth habit of this orchid. I don't need to support it, even though you can see there is a support in the pot for eventualities but I don't need to support it just simply because of the way it just grows upright. What I do, however, in order to encourage the growth to stay in the pot, as opposed to leaning out and over, is I always face the lead direction of growth in the opposite direction of the sun. So for example, if she was living here against that white wall, there's more reflection coming from that white wall than the sun direction coming at this point in time. So she would be living in this direction to encourage the growth to lean in and towards the light. That's how I try to keep her without having to use the supports in the pot. Now, I am really pleased that she is actually able to hold on to this massive bloom that both growths have the capacity not to be bending over. Push comes to shove. I would bring those growths in and just support them a little bit with a wire around that support. But there's no need at this point in time. In the summer, if I see that the growths are getting a little bit too wobbly, because I have to handle the orchids much more in the summer than I do in the winter, then I will be supporting these two growths in order to not cause any damage. But this was my first test orchid when it came to repotting from self-watering. In February, early February of 20, before I even started my YouTube channel, I repotted this orchid and gave her a bigger pot. And that's when I started with cleaning out the root system by a third. The minimum is a third. When the roots are actively growing, it's a good time to repot. With this orchid, it was the first time that I had the opportunity not to just lift the pot out, put it into a bigger pot and fill lecker around it. Because at the end of the day, every cattleya, lelia ends up dumping their roots. It's part of their nature. And even though people think that this is so cool, a great way of growing, because the lecca is inorganic and you don't have to do much with regards to changing media, that is wrong. And it was this orchid was the first time when I did my repot on her that I took the root ball and gave it a proper cleanup and took a third off, maintained the rest of the root ball, and then put her in her bigger pot and filled Lekka around her. And it's working. However, she is so vigorous, she has gotten so big, I'm gonna have to do this again. And when the time comes, I'll take you along and we'll see how the root ball has developed in one year. This is not going to be suitable for another year's growth. And the roots normally come when she's finished blooming, takes about two or three months, then the roots will push out for these two new growths. And basically you consider saying this orchid is doing nothing, but she is growing roots. There will be no new growth from her for me <laughs> until about late August, beginning September. Considering that it is a hot grower, I would say, well, my summers are hot, that should really kickstart her and get her ready. It does, but not on the surface. For me, the growths that you see here now, they matured in the winter, which was kind of concerning at the beginning when I saw her starting new growth and we were getting into cooler temperatures. I thought, well, that defeats the purpose. And I was still thinking she is not acclimated to my climate. Maybe she thought she was still in Honduras or something. But if that's how she grows, and it's her summer that she grows the roots and the rest come later, then that's fine by me. Because at this point in time, I'm just happy that these winter growths made it to be able to bloom 
both of them. And in the winter, I have her on the top shelf of my dining room staging area under blurple lights. Pretty much blurple only because of her height. If I had the size of pot, for example, the smaller size, I would have her under my other shop lights. That's plenty of light for her. But there's a certain measurement and calculation on those shelves with my shop lights, and this size pot doesn't fit. But she is directly under blurple lights. And there's about 30 centimeters height from her leaves to the top of where the blurple lights are actually fixed. A lot of light during the winter at least eight hours. If it's a sunny day, I bring her forward in order to give her direct sun in the winter on the glass shelf of my dining room. If it's a gloomy day, she's up on the shelf all the time. So she only moves like a meter, a meter and a half away from where she lives to, if it's sunny, I want her to have full sun in the winter. When my night temperatures are a steady 15 degrees Celsius outside is when I will move her outdoors and she will live on the east side of my little patio and she will be tucked in behind other orchids because of the fact that she can take a lot of light but not direct sun. There is a curtain in front of the rack which then will protect all the other orchids from bright or direct sun but because I have so much light with the back wall reflecting in white, she is much safer behind other orchids and up against the wall where there is enough light reflection so as not to burn her leaves. Her fragrance is nocturnal. This year, I might have been spoiled with all the other amazing blooms I have going on in the month of February. I was absolutely enthralled by this fragrance all the other times when she bloomed for me in the past. It is a citrusy fragrance. It's gorgeous and it's very, very strong at night. But this year I find she has sort of an odd undernote, almost like something is off, something is decaying. It's, it's, it's not dusty. It, it's like, hmm, you smell the citrus and then you go, ooh, what's that? And that is what I find this year to be a little bit, well, off-putting. But again, in the past, years. I've loved this fragrance. Maybe what is going on in my dining room right now is just she can't compete. So I, I, I will boil it down to that. I've been so spoiled. So when I say about rigid growths, I do fertilize her all year round. I flush her a lot because she is a hungry orchid. And if I miss the mark with over fertilizing at 300 parts per million, then I don't want to have any accumulation of minerals on the surface. And you can see how clean the leka is. That this is, she's taking up all the 300 parts per million all the time. And that to me is a wonderful sign that she's actually taking up 300 parts per million all year round but I flush a lot because she drinks a lot. And that's why her reservoir is also a little bit more full than I would normally have all my other cattleyas, especially now that she's blooming. And during the growth period, no way was I going to back off on the fertilizer, even though it was winter. And I'm happy to say that when she slowed down, I wasn't actually over fertilizing, but yes, a lot of flushing because she will drink that reservoir up fast within three or four days. And the same thing goes for the summer. Even if she's not in active growth on the surface of the pot, I find that she is very, very busy in the pot and is absorbing a lot of water. So 300 parts per million is what she gets for me all year round. And she needs it. With structures like this, they are so fleshy, so strong. Even the flower stem, is like half the size of my finger. I mean, these structures, they need a lot, a lot of fertilizer. I use the MSU, which has calcium and magnesium in it. But sometimes when she is in active growth, I will also supplement with extra CalMag at about 40 parts per million. And that goes in, including together with the MSU fertilizer. I don't distinguish or make any difference simply because she drinks so much so quickly. Pests, I've had no issues with pests. I can't see any kind of nasties going on. The preventative measure helped a lot, I'm sure. The other orchids that I had to treat, they have no more pests either, but 
Yeah, no, she is, she is thorough, she is thick. There's nothing really here. Oh, if you want to call a spider a pest. I don't call my spiders pests. They, they get to live with the orchids and I welcome them in each and every pot. But yeah, no pest problems whatsoever. And if you can give them the right conditions, I would again say this is an easy grower. I've never had a problem with this orchid. And easy, it's all relative. You can say, yeah, you're in southern Spain. Makes life easy for growing these hot growers. But bear in mind that also in the winter, I've got temperatures that do not appeal to what the books say about her. So easy in a sense, I would say, she has a wide range of temperatures that she will tolerate. And it's not necessary that, oh my goodness, I can't do it. She needs too hot temperatures. The only thing I would say, if you cannot provide the light, she will not bloom. That's the only thing. Light is the biggest factor. Temperatures, not so much. So plenty, plenty of light for this one. So yeah, Jose Antonio from Honduras. Thank you for finding this orchid. And also, thank you very much to Todd's Tropicals, Orchidea, and Nicole Diana for joining me in on this care collab for the Brasavola Digbiana. And I'm sorry I keep saying Brasavola. I have the thing with when I buy something, it's in my head, I can't move away from it. Rincolalia Digbiana. Beautiful, beautiful. And I am very, very pleased to have these two blooms, which should last maybe three weeks. If you have this orchid, as I always do at the end of Care Collabs, I invite you to please let me know in the comments below if you do videos and you want to join in on future sporadic updates. Let me know in the comments below and I will put you on the list. The more, the merrier, I say. She is gorgeous and I like to hear and see what other people are doing and how they grow theirs. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was useful and I hope that you have the time to go and watch the other videos as well. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you so very much for your time. Take care and please stay safe. Bye.